In this lesson, we're going to be checking solutions of systems of linear equations. We're going to be solving systems of linear equations by graphing and using systems of linear equations to solve real life problems. A system of linear equations is a set of two or more linear equations in the same variables. An example is shown below. x plus y equals 7, 2x minus 3y equals negative 11. A solution of a system of equations in two variables is an ordered pair that is a solution of each equation in the system. For example one, we need to tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the system of linear equations. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to plug this ordered pair in, the x component in for x, the y component in for y for both of the equations. And if it's true for both, then yes, it is a solution to the system of equations. And if it is not a solution for at least one of them, then it is not a solution to the system of equations. So for the first one, I'm going to plug in the 2 for x and the 5 for y, and I get 2 plus 5 equals 7. And that is true, so it works for the first one. And then the second one, I have 2 times x, which is 2, minus 3 times y, which is 5, and that equals negative 11. Well, let's see. This is 4 minus 15. Does that equal negative 11? Yes, it does. So that is true. So this one is a solution. Okay? And that is because 2 comma 5 works for both of these equations. For part B, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plug in my x component and my y component. So I'm going to rewrite this equation as 0 equals negative 2 times negative 2 minus 4. So now I get 4 minus 4, which is 0. So that is true. And then for the second one, I have 0 for y again equals negative 2 plus 4. And I simplify this, I get 0 equals 2. Well, this is not true. That is not a true statement. So because the bottom equation did not work, we know that this is not a solution. Negative 2 comes 0 is not a solution. And now we're done with example 1. For example two, we're going to solve the system of linear equations by graphing. So the way we're going to do this on the graph is we're going to graph both of these lines um, on the same plane, and then we're going to see where they intersect. And that point of intersection is going to be the solution of the system of equations. So I'll first graph y equals negative 2x plus 5. I see my y-intercept is positive 5, so I'm going to plot that right now. And then I see that my slope the number being multiplied by x when y is alone is negative 2, okay? So from my y-intercept, I'm going to either go down 2 and right 1 or up 2 and left 1. For graphing systems of equations, it is very important to include all of the points that will fit on the line, okay? So I'm going to go, first I'm going to go up 2 and left 1, and then I'm going to go down 2, right 1 as many times as I can. Okay, now I'm going to draw a line through these points. Now I'm going to graph y equals 4x minus 1. I'll do that in a different color. So the y-intercept is negative 1 right here. So that is this ordered pair down here, 0 comma negative 1. So I'll plot that. And the slope is 4. So my rise over run on the graph is going to be 4 over 1. Okay, so I can go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then right 1. And because I included every single point on my graph, I can already tell which ordered pair um, this, these two lines are going to intersect at. Okay, but I can fit one more ordered pair on my graph, so I can do that. Okay, now I'm going to graph my line. And now I can see that the ordered pair where the lines are intersecting is the ordered pair 1, 3. So 1, 3 is the solution to my system of equations. If you wanted to check to see if you're correct, you can just plug these values in um, to the equations, and they should both work if they are correct. And if they're not correct, uh, one or more of them will not work. Okay, so that's how to check. I'll let you do that on your own if you would like. But anyway, we've successfully solved this system of equations by graphing. For example three, a roofing contractor buys 30 bundles of shingles and four rolls of roofing paper for $1,040. In a second purchase, at the same prices, the contractor buys eight bundles of shingles for $256. Find the price per bundle of shingles and the price per roll of roofing paper. 
So there's a lot of information here, but let's figure out what we're actually solving for. So I want to find the price per bundle of shingles. Okay. So price per bundle of shingles. And I want to find the price per roll of roofing paper. Okay. Now, these are what I'm looking for. So these are going to be my two variables. I'll call this one X, and I will call this one Y. Okay. So the price per bundle of shingles is X. The price per roll of roofing paper is Y. And now I want to set up two equations that I can end up graphing uh, to solve the system of equations. So if I look back at the beginning of this word problem, I know that 30 bundles of shingles and four rolls of roofing paper costs $1,040. So I'm going to write an equation, 30 bundles of shingles, and then to figure out how much money that costs for 30, I can just multiply it by the price per bundle of shingles, okay? And that's going to be X. So I'll do 30, this 30 right here, times X, and then I'm going to add that to my four rolls of roofing paper times the price of the roll of roofing paper, which is Y. So it's going to be four rolls times Y, so 4Y. And I know the total price of that is equal to 1,040. So now I have one equation that I need to graph. For the second equation, I see that for this second purchase, the contractor buys eight bundles of shingles for $256, okay? And that's it. So I know that eight bundles of shingles times the price per bundle, which is X, so eight times X is gonna equal 256. So eight X equals 256. So now that we've successfully written our equations, let's graph them, okay? The first one that I'm gonna graph is just eight X equals 256, because that's the easiest, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is divide by eight on both sides. And I'm going to get x is equal to 32. You can divide that out if you'd like. Okay, but x equals 32 is just a vertical line at 32. So I'm going to draw that right now. Okay, so now that that line is graphed, I'm going to graph 30x plus 4y equals 1,040. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this into slope-intercept form. So I'm actually going to move this equation down. And now I'm going to subtract 30x on both sides. I get 4y equals negative 30x plus 1040. Okay, and then I'm going to divide the entire equation by 4, aka every term by 4. I'm going to get y equals negative 15 over 2x plus 260. Okay, this is also the same thing as negative 7.5. Anyway, um, now I'm gonna graph this equation. So the y-intercept here I know is 260. So I'm gonna graph that. And if you look at your uh, scale on the y-axis, I'm actually counting by 40 here. So this would be 240, this would be 280, this is gonna be 320. So 260 is gonna be right in the middle, okay? And since we're not dealing with a point on grid lines, it's not going to be as exact, and that's okay. We have a way to check our answer afterwards. Okay, so now I want to graph my slope. My slope is negative 15 over 2. Okay, but I see that I am actually counting by fours here. Okay, and um, I might actually use 8. Okay, I might actually convert this fraction, this negative 15 over 2, into 8 as my denominator. The way I do that is to get from negative 15 over two to get to eight on the bottom, I have to multiply by four. And then I'll multiply four on the top, I get negative 60 over eight, okay? So from this ordered pair, what I'll do here is I'll go down 60, okay? Well, each one is 40 and I already went halfway, so I'll go down to this ordered pair and then I'll go to eight right there. Okay, and I can keep doing that. So bring me down halfway through there, there, and then halfway through. Okay. Well, I know that halfway through is going to be 20 because 0 and 40, halfway through that is going to be 20. Okay. So I'm going to draw my line right now. So I'm pretty sure that this is going to be the point 32, 20, but 
whenever we're not dealing with grid lines, it's always a good idea to check our answer. Okay, so I'm just going to write that 32 comma 20 as our solution. Okay, and I'm just going to plug this in to both of our equations to make sure that that works. So for this equation, to check this one, you can plug it in either into this one or into this one because they are equivalent equations. So that's going to be 20 equals negative 15 over 2 times 32 plus 260. Okay. Well, these are going to cancel and become 16. So 15 times 16 is going to give me negative 240. And then plus 260, this is going to give me 20. Okay, so I know that works because that, that is a true statement. Okay, and then I know that 8 times x, which is 32, does equal 256. So my second equation works. So I know that these are the correct values, but since I'm dealing with a word problem, I want a word answer. So I'll write that up at the top. Okay, find the price per bundle of shingles, which is x, and find the price per roll of roofing paper, which is y. So we know that for x, it's going to be $32 per bundle of shingles. And then for y, we know it's $20. So this is x. And then for y, we know it's $20 per roll of roofing paper. Sorry, it's a little messy here. Anyway, now we finish this one.